Today's presentation is on the different types of joints that you find in the human body. You should have a handout to fill out as you go along. Just some introductory things about joints. A fancy name for joint is an articulation. So joints is simply where two bones come together. Joints have a couple of functions to hold bones together which is most important to allow for mobility. Joints can be classified two separate ways. First based on their function and secondly based on their structure. If we look at their functional classification we have three different classifications. Synarthrosis refers to joints that are immovable such as the sutures of your skull. The second type are slightly movable and they would be amphiarthrosis. Examples of those would they be the symphysis of the pubic area or the, uh, where two vertebrae come together. Diarthrosis is the third type of classification and that refers to freely movable joints which is most of the joints in the human body as we think of them. The second way to classify joints is by how they're put together or by their structure. The first of these are fibrous joints which are simply connected by fibrous tissue. So we looked at the sutures in the skull when we did the bone lab and what you notice is that they're irregular. It's not just flat bones setting next to each other. So it's both the fibrous connective tissue and that structure of ir irregular kind of bone edges that keeps the skull bones in place. In addition to sutures, syndesmosis would refer to another type of fibrous joint. Basically it's um, longer fibers and therefore allows for a little bit more movement or some movement as opposed to uh, sutures. The distal end of the tibia and the fibula would be an example of this. So as we look ahead at the next slide you can see where that tissue connects the tibia to the fibula. And when someone talks about having a high ankle sprain this is the tissue they're talking about damaging and often that takes a little bit longer to heal. A second kind of classification in terms of structure would be cartil Our next example will be cartilaginous joints and these are basically bones that are connected by cartilage and so we see this between the vertebrae uh, of the spine and then we see this again between the two pubic bones in the pubic symphysis. Synovial joints are what we kind of typically think of as joints and they're articulations that are uh, separated. These are joints where the articulating bones or the two bones that come together to make the joint are separated by a joint cavity and that joint cavity is then filled with synovial fluid. So some features that synovial joints would have in common would be hyaline cartilage covering the ends of the bones and we spoke about that in the last unit that we did or we looked at the slides of that. Joint surfaces that are enclosed by a fibrous capsule so the whole thing is sort of surrounded by some fiber there's a joint cavity like I said on the last slide filled with synovial fluid and then ligaments reinforce that joint. So if you look at a picture we can kind of see the four parts of this the uh, articular or hyaline cartilage on the, in, uh, the ends of each bone, the synovial fluid in the middle so these two things together keep the bones from rubbing on one another and then we'd have a fibrous capsule around the joint and the ligaments holding one bone to the other. An additional structure that some synovial joints have is a bursa sac and that's basically a flattened fibrous sac uh, filled with fluid. 
So it has the synovial membrane to line it. It has the fluid inside. It's actually not a part of the joint. That doesn't mean it's in, not important. That doesn't mean it can't get injured. So if we look here, there's a bursa sac, and it's just keeping these two bones apart. What can happen when you have an irritation of the bursa sac is you have what we call bursitis. It literally means inflammation of the bursa. And so again, whenever you have something that's too large for the space it's in, and it's swollen or inflamed, that's going to irritate other things uh, that are around it. The last part of this the last part of this lecture is to look at the types of synovial joints based on their shape. So if we look at the plane joint, you have two rather flat surfaces which slide by one another. In the hinge joint, we have something that basically works like a door and is going to work in one plane. In a pivot joint, we really have a ring and a sleeve. And so then the sling or the ring kind of rotates within that sleeve. And we saw that when we looked at the uh, elbow joint with the skeletons. The last three types, the last three types include the condyloid joint. You're going to find that between the metacarpal and the phalange. And what's different about this one is simply the shape. So you kind of have an egg-shaped end and a piece that it fits within. Also, this uh, joint can move in a variety of directions, including circumduction, but it cannot do rotation. And we'll talk about what those two words mean in the next lecture on muscle joint movement. Next is a saddle joint. That happens in your thumb. You have one convex and one concave surface. And then the last is a ball and socket joint. Ball and socket joints give a lot of range of motion, but they're fairly easy to dislocate. And we see that at the shoulder and at the hip. And we are now done.